So let's talk about 10 incredibly rare guard dog breeds. Welcome back to the Fenrir Canine Show. My name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and the founder and CEO of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. And this channel is dedicated to helping you choose the right breed for you and how to become high level canine leaders that raise perfect canine companions. So if you are new here and you want to join the incredible community that we have here on the Fenrir Canine Show, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future upload and get involved with our community down in the comment section below. Our community is full of lifelong decades of experience with these large powerful breeds all the way to first time owners that are researching these breeds for the very first time and they have amazing conversations. It's the best thing about this channel so get involved, get stuck in and I can't wait to chat to you down there later. Now in this video I wanted to break down 10 incredibly rare guard dog breeds that not only don't get enough attention day to day but definitely don't get enough attention here on the Fenrir Canine Show. Now before we dive into it, it is worth noting that this list is in no particular order. The breed at number one doesn't mean it's the most rare and the breed at number 10 be the less rare. It's just 10 breeds that are definitely very rare and there's far more than I could fit into this top 10 list. So if you guys enjoy it, make sure you let me know in the comment section. Let me know if you want me to do a part two to this and I'll do 10 more rare breeds that we don't talk about enough. And if there's any breeds that you want featured in that list, Again, the comment section is the place for that. Now, my breed that I'm gonna feature in the number 10 spot is a breed that I've been fascinated about for years, and I've done tons of research into this breed, but I've been waiting to have some first-hand experience before I do a video on it. Now, unfortunately, because of just how rare this breed is, especially here in the UK, I still don't have any first-hand experience with the breed. Now, this breed is called the Canis Panther. Now, first of all, what an incredible name for a breed. Let's face it, that is an awesome breed name. Obviously, they're an extremely beautiful and striking breed to look at. But the origins of the breed and the breed that go into creating this Canis Panther is equally as fascinating and the reason that I've been studying the breed at length. The breed is made up of the Doberman, the Amstaff, the Labrador and the Great Dane, which is a very interesting four combinations of dog to create what very well may be one of the most all-round high-quality guard dog breeds on the planet. Obviously, with the Doberman, you get incredible guarding and protection skills as well as incredible levels of intelligence and trainability. Add in the Labrador's trainability, intelligence and eagerness to please on top of that and you've already got a recipe for an extremely trainable dog. The Labrador is also renowned for being an excellent family dog and very gentle with its owners and its family. You add in the Amstaff to that mix who is also an incredibly gentle, loyal and loving dog but also has obviously got its terrier background so it's tenacious, eager to work, and can work all day, every day, and then pack in the size of the Great Dane for some added mass and stature, and you have got one of the most intriguing guard dog breeds on the planet. Now, if I was to put money on a breed that is considered extremely rare now, but if we could take a peek 20 years from now and look at a breed that was rare but is now super popular, I honestly believe the Canis Panther might be that breed. I honestly believe that they're starting to pick up a little bit of momentum now, and that's going to turn into a snowball and an avalanche of popularity over the coming decades and there'll be household names alongside the Doberman or the Rottweiler or the German Shepherd. At number nine I have the Catahoula Leopard Dog and I do apologize if I pronounce that wrong but this Leopard Dog is considered to be one of the oldest dog breeds bred in the United States. It was named after the Catahoula Parish in Louisiana which where it was formerly bred to be an amazing hunting companion and often used to tackle even a large game like wild boar. They're also an incredibly beautiful dog to look at, being very striking with multiple different colours, spotted patterns and stunning eyes often found to be in that really striking blue colour that separates them from nearly all other breeds. At number eight, I have another breed that I'm probably going to mispronounce and that is the Norwegian Lunderhund. Another incredibly rare breed, this breed excels as a hunting companion and was bred to hunt puffins and to be able to excel at that role it has some very unique unique physical characteristics that separate it from the vast majority of other breeds. This includes having six toes on each paw and prick ears that it can completely control at will. It also has the ability to tip its head all the way back that it can touch its head to its backbone, which when you see is incredibly odd looking, but that level of athleticism and flexibility does make it absolutely incredible in its role as a puffin hunting companion. That's something that you want to say 10 times quick. The breeder 
have at number seven is a breed that's called the Stabby Hound. Again, this is an incredibly rare breed and it's thought that there's less than 4,000 in the world left remaining. They're from the Friesland region of the Netherlands and they make for an incredibly versatile dog, being not only used as a fantastic hunting companion, but also they make a brilliant guard dog, as well as being fantastic at catching vermin like rats and mice, which makes them in that area of Netherlands still to this day, a very popular choice for farmers that can use that versatility for a dog that can drop into many different roles around the farm. At number six, I do have a rare breed and a breed that is featured much more commonly here on this channel, and that's the Tibetan Mastiff. Now, although rare, the Tibetan Mastiff is a little bit more well-known than many of the other breeds uh, that we're gonna discuss in this video, and that's usually down to the fact that they're renowned for being the most expensive dog breed on the planet. They are an absolutely ancient dog breed that did originate in Tibet and was fantastic at being able to very independently guard things like monasteries. Now, with that level of independence does come a very challenging dog to be able to train and a very challenging dog to be able to have them look to you for leadership, guidance, and direction, which is one of the reasons that they are very, very rarely recommended to anybody other than experienced extremely experienced owners that can offer the lifestyle required for a very, very intense Mastiff breed like the Tibetan Mastiff. Now, all of those things aside, there is no doubt that the Tibetan Mastiff is an absolutely beautiful dog to look at. Potentially, depending on the kind of things that you find striking and beautiful about the dog, they're very, they're a lot of people's most beautiful dog in the world. And it's easy to see why when you just take one look at how glorious and regal these large, powerful dogs are. Now, before we jump into my top five picks, remember if you need any help training your dog, either from a puppy and you wanna get it right the first time around to have a perfect canine companion from the day you bring it home, I've got my perfect puppy course that will guide you through step by step exactly how to do that. Or if you're a little bit behind that curve and you start to struggle with a variety of different behavior problems, one of the first things I do with anybody that comes to me for help with behavior modification consultation is to put them through my canine bootcamp protocol. Again, I have an online version of that that you can follow at home that allow you to restructure your relationship with your dog, become a high level canine leader, and then be able to communicate exactly what it is that you do want from them, as well as exactly what it is that you don't want from them. And that is kind of the essence of being a high level canine leader with a perfect canine companion. So if you're interested in those, the link is down in the description box below. At number five, we have the Carolean Bear Dog. Now, guess what this dog was originally bred to hunt. Yeah, bears and large game. And actually, even though around the world, they're one of the rarest dog breeds in the planet, in their homeland of Finland, they're actually the top 10 most common breeds in the planet. And that's because of their fantastic abilities, not only as large game hunters, but as is often the case with those kind of dogs, it transitions beautifully over to them being extremely effective watch and guard dogs, which is one of the most common things that they're used for nowadays. Again, another breed that is very striking to look at, absolutely beautiful, and would make a fearless family guardian. At number four, we have the Czechoslovakian wolf dog. Now, the Czechoslovakian wolf dog is an absolutely incredible breed of animal, definitely not one that is recommended for any form of inexperienced owner and should only be owned by the highest quality canine leaders in the planet. They were originally bred over in Czechoslovakia and they were bred from working line German Shepherds and in an experiment they mix those working German Shepherds with wild wolves. The result is the Czechoslovakian wolf dog and they became so popular over where they were originally bred that they've actually become their national dog. Now because of that mix with the working line German Shepherds as well as the tenacity that comes obviously from an actual wolf, the Czechoslovakian wolf dog is an incredibly versatile breed providing you have the skill set and capabilities to be able to tap in to that level of intensity that comes with the Czechoslovakian wolf dog. Obviously they're also absolutely beautiful to look at because they do obviously resemble wolves. Now, for me personally, I think there's something deep in our DNA, or at least so with me, that anytime you look at any kind of large wolf or large cat like lions and tigers, it triggers some kind of adrenaline response that gives you that wow factor. And I think that's the reason that we're so obsessed with wolves, lions, and tigers because 
back in the olden days with our caveman DNA relatives that's still in us to fear those animals. But just because we find them so impressive and beautiful and have that incredible wow factor absolutely does not mean that everybody should go out and get one. Like I say, I'm a huge fan of wolf hybrids, including the Czechoslovakian wolf dog, but I do think that they should be reserved for a very, very select amount of people that are able to offer that kind of dog the lifestyle that they need. At number three, I have the Guatemalan dog. Dogo. Now, the Guatemalan Dogo used to be known as the Guatemalan Bull Terrier or the Guatemalan Mastiff. And it's easy to see why, because obviously they beautifully incorporate both sides of the bull and terrier type breeds with their face and face shape, as well as the large, powerful mastiff type characteristics. It's also really easy to understand why so many people mistake them for the Dogo Argentino, but the Guatemalan Dogo is definitely a breed into itself. The Guatemalan Dogo is an absolutely fierce protection and guarding dog that makes a wonderful family guardian. Again, if you have the skill set to make sure that everybody in the household is a Calm, consistent leader for such a incredibly for such an incredibly intense dog with extremely high levels of capability should they ever actually be needed to or unfortunately should they ever make the mistake and utilize that skill set when you really don't want them to which again is why they would definitely not be a breed that's recommended to many people which is probably one of the reasons that so many of the breeds on today's list are so rare but on top of those incredible guarding and protection instincts they're also known to be very stable, obedient and loving with their family, just extremely wary and watchful of other people, other strangers, which why, like I say, they're definitely not something that should be considered by very many people. At number two, we have another breed like the Tibetan Mastiff that, although extremely rare, is featured quite a lot on this channel, and that's the Fila Brasileiro or the Brazilian Mastiff. Now, the Brazilian Mastiff is one of the breeds that is completely illegal here in the UK, as well as many other countries have banned the breed. Now, I did a whole video dedicated to dog bands and the breeds that are banned as well as breaking down my opinion on that so we're not going to discuss that but if you are interested then you can go and watch that video after you finish this one but that breed is an incredibly effective protection guarding and hunting dog now obviously when you combine those skill sets with a dog that is also insanely powerful and extremely large and muscular increase their physique and physical capabilities are unlike many other breeds on the planet, which is why if you get it wrong with a breed like the Fila, the results can be absolutely disastrous. So although I don't necessarily agree with dog bands, I definitely do think that a, Braz a breed like the Brazilian Mastiff, again, is not suited for very many people at all. However, if you are, have the capability to be a high level canine leader and you've got the capability to train a breed like a Brazilian Mastiff, there might not be many better protection dogs on the planet. They're known to be insanely loyal and devoted, so much so that over in Brazil they have a saying that translates to as faithful as a feeler. And at number one, and the last breed we're going to talk about on today's list of rare guard dog breeds is the Thai Ridgeback. Now the Thai Ridgeback, like the Rhodesian Ridgeback's most striking feature is that ridge that runs along the top of its body. Now although that's super striking, all it actually is is just the same fur that grows in the opposite direction to the rest of its body, which creates that fantastic ridge that runs across the top, which alongside the Rhodesian Ridgeback really separates them from all other breeds. Now, the Thai Ridgeback originated in Thailand and up until recently had never left the area where they were bred, which makes them one a fantastic example of a dog breed that has been super contained for a very long time. Over in Thailand, they are used as fantastic watch and guard dogs. However, they are extremely independent and known for being incredible escape artists. So unless you've got really secure gardens and fencing and you're after a breed that is extremely rare, the Thai Ridgeback probably isn't a breed that you should really consider over the vast majority of other breeds that are out there and available. So there's 10 really rare guard dog breeds that you may or may not have heard about. I'm really interested if there's any of those that you have heard about, and definitely if there's any of those dogs that you own, leave those down in the comment section below. Like I said, if you want me to make a part two for this video, there's 10 more breeds that we could easily feature that might highlight to you some breeds that you've never heard of. Again, little bit of fun, interesting, learn more about breeds, 
because the more we learn from the breeds, the breeds origins, breed temperament, breed characteristics, the more we can learn about what breed fits our lifestyles best, which is the first piece to the puzzle of being a high level canine leader that raises perfect canine companions. So again, if you want any more information to help with any of those things, the links are down in the description box. Subscribe if you're new, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Fenrir Canine Show.